everyone, Ramel here, and this is episode zero of my JavaScript series. In this video, we're going to go through the steps required to make sure you have your environment set up locally. We're going to install Node, a text editor, as well as go through a couple of examples to make sure everything is set up correctly. If you have your environment set up already, feel free to skip this video. I'm going to have links as well as the description filled out with the steps you need. So if you don't need a video, everything is going to be in text. And if you do need a video, feel free to keep watching. By the end of this video, we're going to be able to do something like this. We're going to be able to run JavaScript from the command line. And an example of that is a very simple hello world. And what this does is print out the words hello world, as well as run a very, very simple server that has one endpoint. And to hit it, we're going to use curl and it will respond back with a message. Hello world. The first thing that we're going to need to do is install Node.js. And once you land on this page, depending on your operating system, just download the latest version. We're going to keep it very simple. We're not going to worry about NVM or we're not going to worry about anything else. We're just going to download the latest feature or the latest version and install that. And right now, as of this video, the version is 14.1.0. I'll have all of the versions that we use in the description below. So if you're watching this from the future, you'll be able to know what version we're using. But all we need to do is download this. And once this is downloaded, all we have to do is go through the installer. Um, so we install this. Agree, agree. And once all of this is set up, we can open a new terminal window. I personally use iTerm2, but you should be able to use um, the default terminal built in. All you have to do is type node v to confirm that we did install version 14.1. Point o. And I'll do that in terminal as well. And we can type node v. And there we can see that we have the current version that we installed. After this is all set up and installed, the next thing that we're going to want to do is install a text editor. For me, I use Visual Studio's code, but there are also a few other options. There is Atom as well as Sublime Text. Three. I started with Sublime Text 3 back in 2011, and then I went to Atom around 2013. And then ever since Visual Studio Code was released, I've stuck to it. Visual Studio Code was actually a fork of Atom. Um, and yeah, I've just had a very good experience with Visual Studio Code. Um, it's very lightweight compared to something like WebStorm. But if you guys did want a full IDE, WebStorm is available. You don't really have to worry about packages and plugins. Everything kind of just works out of the box. And it does cost some money, but if you are a student or you do have, or yeah, if you are a student, you do get this um, for free. So feel free to try this out, but there is a lot for IntelliJ in general is a resource hog. Um, so if you guys are running a lot of things in the background, as well as a lot of Chrome tabs, you'll probably find that WebStorm is not the best option. I would really recommend trying out Visual Studio Code, but feel free to try out Atom and Sublime as well. Um, so once Visual Studio Code is set up, all you need to do is open it and I'll make a new um, project. Um, and then we're going to do a new file and then do hello world.js. And here we can do our console. That's the console object. And it has a function called log, which we can pass a message. We'll go, hello, YouTube. And we can go back to terminal and then go to episode zero live and then execute our hello world and you'll see that it printed out hello YouTube. 
Um, so this tells me that everything is set up correctly. You have a very, very simple JavaScript environment and you can run and execute JavaScript code. Um, so the next thing that we're going to do is we want to set up that server. So we'll be using something called Express and then we're just going to make another folder. We're going to name it server and then we're going to change directory and go into server. Um, you can do this all through Visual Studios as well. Um, you just right click new folder, right click new file, where you can click these icons up top here. But once we have our server set up, we're going to do npm init, which is going to initialize our project. Um, if you don't do a dash Y, it goes through a prompt. Um, so it'll ask you for the name, version, description, entry point, test command, all of this stuff. And this is setting up our package.json file. Um, and now we can do ls and we'll see that the package.json is listed. And if we take a look inside there, we'll see all of this filled out in the questionnaire that we just answered. If you guys want this automatically filled in, all you have to do is npm init dash y and it'll do all of this for you without having to go through that questionnaire. And the package.json is pretty much a file that tells npm what our project is or what our package is, what version, um, the entry point scripts, as well as the packages that we rely on. And one of those for this example is going to be express. And to install that, all we have to do is npm install dash dash save express. So this is all installed and then we'll see a, our dependency with express express is a web application framework built on top of node.js and i've used it from anywhere between serving my single page applications as well as using it for just an api server um, but i'll go into details a little later on in future videos but for now this is what we're going to be using um, as our server framework so we're going to keep this very, very fast and very high level. This is just an example. I'll go through what all of this does in future videos. First, we're going to just declare the variable express and we're going to require the express package. And then we're going to declare a variable called app and initialize express. And then we're going to do app dot get. And that takes a path as well as there's a callback function. So when you hit this path, this code execute, and this has a request param and a response param. And the code we're going to send is we're going to respond, send, and the message can be a JSON object with the property message. Hello, YouTube node. Hello, YouTube from node. Um, so this isn't going to do anything. First, we need to listen on a specific port. And to do that, we do app.listen. We'll go 8081 and we'll have a callback um, function here once everything is up and running. And we can do console.log. We are running on 8081. And now we can just do node server.js. You can see that it's running on 8081 and here we can curl localhost 8081 and we'll get the message back from YouTube. Um, but yeah, that's going to be it for the setup. If you guys have both this printed out as well as the hello YouTube from the um, other JavaScript file, we are good to go. Anyways, that's going to be it for this video. I hope you guys got your environment set up. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below and I'll do my best to answer them. And I will be trying to post these every other week, um, but I do have a couple of videos that I want to go through. It's going to be more high level of how I came to this problem, as well as my thought process and how I decided upon a solution and to see if that solution does or did work. But yeah, if you guys want to know more or want to follow along in those videos, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Again, I do stream on Twitch every Tuesday, Thursdays, and Saturdays. 
and you can always hit the discord server if you have any questions about anything but that's going to be it for me i am out